I was the babysitter for a rich family who gave me a list of strange rules. The job offer had seemed like a stroke of luck. Babysit for the wealthy Stanton family in their sprawling estate, with a pay that seemed too good to be true. They had one child, a six-year-old named Alexander, who needed care while they attended a distant event. The moment I stepped into their opulent home, I was struck by its cold, unwelcoming atmosphere, but the allure of the pay blinded me to the warning signs. Mr. and Mrs. Stanton were quick to outline a series of rules, each more peculiar than the last. Do not go into the gardens after sunset, keep all doors locked after 9 p.m., and most importantly, never let Alexander out of your sight after dark. They spoke with a severity that brooked no argument, leaving me with a list and a creeping sense of unease. Alexander was a peculiar boy, silent and observant, with a stare that seemed to look right through me. Despite his oddities, there was a charm to him, an innocence that belied the strictness of the rules. I followed them meticulously, attributing the family's eccentricity to their wealth and isolation. However, as night crept over the mansion, the atmosphere shifted. Shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and the air grew thick with an unspoken dread. It was then that Alexander's demeanor changed. The boy, who had been so quiet, now exuded an unsettling energy. His requests became demands, each more bizarre and dangerous, leading me to the edges of what I felt safe doing. It wasn't until I heard the laughter, not from the basement, as the rules had warned, but from Alexander himself, that the true terror of my situation dawned on me. The laughter was too old, too knowing for a child his age. When I found him talking to shadows, his words were of hunger and anticipation, speaking of a feast that was long overdue. The final night, I awoke to find Alexander standing at the foot of my bed, his eyes glowing with a predatory light. You didn't follow the rules, he whispered, though I had been meticulous in my adherence. That's when I understood, the rules were not for his protection or mine, but a ritual, a preparation for what was to come. The Stantons had not left to attend an event, they had retreated to a safe distance, knowing what would transpire. The realization hit me with the force of a physical blow, I was not a babysitter, but the next meal and a cycle of feeding that sustained whatever Alexander truly was. As I write this, hiding in a locked room with dawn still hours away, I know I won't survive the night. My only hope is that this account finds its way to the outside world, a warning to anyone who might be lured by the promise of easy money and the charm of a child who is anything but. The Stantons are not just a wealthy family with eccentric habits, they are keepers of a monster that wears the face of a boy. And I, foolish and blinded by greed, walked into their trap, thinking I was the guardian, when in fact, I was the prey.